Email has become one of the most widely used forms of communication, not only within an office, but anywhere in the world. You can use it for more formal communication with colleagues or clients, or for informal communication with family and friends. You can send email messages to one or several people almost instantaneously. You can create a new email message by clicking the New Email button in the New Group on the Home tab. The new message template consists of three main elements. Address fields, a subject field and a message pane. In the address fields, you can specify the email addresses of the recipients. Recipients are those people you want to send an email to. The To and CC address fields are part of the new message template by default. Select each field to find out more about it. In the To field, you can add the primary recipients of the message. In the Carbon Copy field, better known as the CC field, you can add secondary recipients. These recipients will receive a copy of the email message and they can view and respond to the other recipients specified in the To and CC fields. You can add the Blind Carbon Copy or BCC address field to the message template in order to add private recipients to a message. You can add the BCC field to the new message template by clicking the BCC button on the Options tab of the ribbon. Every new message template will then contain the BCC field. Recipients you add to the BCC field will receive the email message and they can note the names or addresses of recipients you added to the To and CC fields. However, the contents of the BCC field are not visible to other recipients in the To, CC or BCC fields. You can remove the BCC field by clicking the BCC button again. You need to specify at least one email address in any of the address fields before you can send a message. You can add recipients quickly by typing their email addresses directly in a field. You can do this for email addresses that are not in your lists of contacts. If the recipients are listed in your Outlook address book, you can simply type the contact's name and Outlook will recognize the email address. Valid email addresses are underlined in the address fields. The Check Names feature is useful when you manually type in parts of a recipient's name. It provides the full details from Outlook's address books or other contact lists and helps to correct any mistyped recipients from address books. Outlook 2010 also includes an auto-complete feature, which is enabled by default. It displays suggested contact names or addresses as you start typing based on previously typed names or addresses. You can then select the contact you want from the list available. Outlook 2010's autocomplete feature automatically inserts semicolons as delimiters when you enter more than one address. However, should you enter a new address manually, you will need to add the semicolon. Another way to add recipients is by clicking the To or CC buttons to open the Outlook address book. This method is useful if you want to add several recipients or for contacts you don't use often. If you have an Exchange Server email account, the address book for the global address list displays. It lists all the names and email addresses of everyone who has a mailbox on the mail server. You can scroll through the list to locate contacts, or if you have an extensive address book, it's more efficient to search for particular contacts using the search field. Once you locate the contact you want, you can select the contact in the list and then specify whether the contact will be a primary, secondary or private recipient. If you add any recipients to the BCC address field in this dialog box, the field will only be added to this message, not to all messages. When you return to the message, the recipients you've specified display in the relevant address fields. What does the BCC field allow you to do? After addressing an email message, you can provide a subject line and the main body of the message. In the subject field, you can type a brief one-line summary describing the content of the email. This makes it easy for the recipients to identify the purpose of the message and to sort their messages by subject matter.
In the message field, you can compose your email message. You could also choose to do so before entering the recipients and the subject. Outlook 2010 provides an automatic spell checker, which identifies spelling errors in the body of the message. As you type, Outlook underlines potential spelling errors in red. To correct the spelling of individual words underlined in red, you can right-click the word and choose the correct option from the pop-up menu. You can also use the Spelling and Grammar feature on the Review tab to check the spelling in a message. When the Spelling and Grammar dialog box opens, it displays the first misspelled word in red in the sentence containing the error. The Suggestions pane suggests alternatives to correct the spelling error. Using the buttons in the dialog box, you can resolve potential spelling errors in various ways. Select each button to learn more about its function. The Ignore Once button allows you to ignore a word that's flagged as a spelling error. For instance, if a word is flagged and it's not spelled incorrectly, you can simply ignore the flagged word. The program will then flag the next misspelled word. The Ignore All button allows you to ignore all instances of a word. For instance, if the word is not spelled incorrectly or you don't want to change its spelling, you can ignore it so that the spell checker doesn't flag the word each time it finds the word in the email. You can use this for a word that occurs frequently in an email message. You can click the Add to Dictionary button to add a word to the Office Dictionary. If the word is in the dictionary, the program won't flag it as misspelled in spell checks you do at a later stage. Outlook suggests corrections for most misspelled words. You can choose the appropriate suggestion from the list and then click the Change button to accept the suggestion in order to correct the spelling error. You can click the Change All button if you want the program to apply the correction to the rest of the email. This is useful if a misspelled word occurs several times in an email message. Using the autocorrect feature, you can ensure that words you misspell frequently are corrected automatically. For example, if the spell checker flags a word you often spell incorrectly, you can choose the correct spelling suggestion and then click the autocorrect button. If you misspell this word in any new email messages, it will be automatically corrected. You can also enable the Spelling and Grammar Checker to check for any grammar errors in the text by selecting the Check Grammar checkbox. Once all the spelling mistakes have been flagged, Outlook will note the grammar mistakes by formatting the error in green font. You can choose to ignore the error or move to the next sentence. The Suggestions pane provides options to correct the error. You can accept a suggestion by clicking Change or you can first click Explain to find out why it's listed a grammar error. After you've resolved all misspelled words and grammar errors, the dialog box informs you that the spelling and grammar check is complete. You can configure how the spell checker works by first accessing the Outlook options from Backstage View. You can click the Spelling and Autocorrect button on the Mail tab of the Outlook Options dialog box to do this. In the Proofing section of the Editor Options dialog box, you can specify which errors the spell checker should flag or ignore. You can also choose to recheck your email from scratch so that errors that you chose to ignore when first running the spell checker will be flagged again. You can save messages as drafts so that you can complete them at a later stage. To do this, you can click the Save button on the Quick Access toolbar and close the message. Alternatively, you can press the Escape key while the new message window is open and then confirm the save operation when prompted. Or you can click Save As on the File tab. You can locate the message in the Drafts folder where Outlook automatically saves it. When you want to continue working on a message stored in the Drafts folder, you can double click it to open it. You can then continue editing it. You can send an email message that you've written by clicking the Send button. When the message has been sent, Outlook 2010 saves a copy in the Sent Items folder. When creating a new email message in Outlook 2010, 
you need to specify the intended recipients of the message in the To, CC and BCC fields. Or you can select recipients to add to each field from contacts in the Outlook 2010 address book. Outlook automatically checks for spelling and grammar mistakes as you type the email message body. You can also do a manual spelling and grammar check. You can save an incomplete message in the Drafts folder. Once a message is sent, it's automatically saved in the Sent Items folder.